You know what those little notches are though? There are two little notches there. That's how you know it was taken on the Hasselblad. Stuart and I were together at, um, at Millfield School in Somerset. Basically, we just stayed friends and then I went away and studied photography. He went to California, studied communications, I think it was, and uh, he asked me to take some pictures for him. I, I remember my, my quite old aunt giving me a, a folding camera, a bellows camera. That was my first introduction to cameras. My, my uh, uncle on the English side of the family also had a, a camera which I immediately took to aesthetically. And later on, I think I bought one, I think when I was about 17 or 18, something resembling that, which I, I took some photographs of, um, of the very early Jethro Tull. It became part of what I enjoyed doing over the years, was to have a camera with me. I think what's different about me is that a lot of the photographers like the Steve Rapport and Penny Smith and, you know, all these people were um, on assignment for magazines. So they had a steady stream of assignments to go out, go and shoot this person there, do this and that. I just went and did it myself. There was no assignment. This was like the, the ultimate kind of passion project. I just knew I wanted to kind of be a part of this thing that was happening. And so I took my little shitty camera and went and, you know, ended up joining the circus. It was Stuart's band and I guess I, I thought at the time when well, he's asked me to take pictures because he knows I'm not going to charge for them. I think that was probably his, his mindset at the time. In many cases, I could go back and look at collections of my own photographs and say, yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel about this song. And it, and it worked, at least for me. Now the gear does everything for you, pretty much. I mean, it will focus on an eye. It will um, do the exposure. You can expose like up to 6,400 easily and some of them even, even more. In a sense, it's all bullshit. The greatest photographs, the greatest photographers, were using the most basic equipment you can imagine. I mean, Andre Cortez, he was using glass plates, he was using all kinds of basic stuff, but he got spontaneous photographs all the same. Another of my favorite photographers, Robert Frank. I mean, you look at the Americans, could that be improved on by photographing at sort of 40 megapixels in color? I, I, I don't think so, actually. I like the look of film still. And in fact, my own, my own way of working a lot of the time is to use film and scan it. And you've got an analog source. I suppose I became more enamored of, of digital photography at the point where I, as I predicted it would, when it equaled or surpassed the quality that you got from, from film cameras. You know, di digital photography suddenly became um, a much more useful way for me to follow as a hobby and occasionally as a, in a, in a more professional capacity to carry on with photography. For me, film is kind of quite soft. It doesn't have the um, a ridiculous definition of, um, of some of this digital stuff, which is too clinical. It's got no feeling. Whereas you look at film, it's got its own feeling. It's like Trix does not look the same as something like Delta 400. They may have the same speed, but they have a different spectral sensitivity. They have different kind of grain. Then you slap it into a different developer, it looks different. I like all that stuff. It's fun, it's interesting. It's a bit more demanding, it takes more time. So what? This cover image was from the Polaroid Polapan film, which you would put it in a machine and roll it through, and it would sometimes get caught and, you know, the end of the roll. So this is really the end of the roll where it's got fogged or something, the chemicals kind of got fucked up. And to me, that's like, 
the beauty is in those kind of moments when things kind of are not perfect. I suppose Fuji cameras have been the things that I've stuck with most often, although I, I've had uh, three Leica digital cameras, including intriguingly uh, a Leica M10 mono, which simply only shoots black and white. It's an interesting camera to have, as long as you're not leaving it in a dressing room or a hotel room. If the trouble is these things are so expensive and valuable and rather like an expensive flute, I, I don't like leaving them lying around. And so as a camera to take on tour, it's not something I, I would do. I tend to take a small Fuji with me with a, a walk around 40 mil equivalent lens. It's a um, pancake lens, you know, it'll fit in my pocket. That was the thing about the Konica. I used to carry that camera everywhere. That was how I got to take the pictures of Debbie Harry backstage in Bournemouth because um, Squeeze invited me to the gig and I thought, I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get backstage with the camera, you know. I took it backstage and it had this, the little flash on it and I got those pic the pictures of Debbie Harry. There was this kind of immediacy. It was like, oh, we need a sleeve for Trash City. What should we do? Let's go and like, let's go and stand in front of Buckingham Palace and climb around on the statues and take pictures and then we'll make a collage out of it. Can you imagine that now? Like trying to do it, we'd probably be arrested. We always subscribe to the like, better to ask forgiveness method. You know, this isn't that long ago, but things have really changed. People say the 80s were terrible, but Compared to now, the 80s are like fucking, it's like, was like flower power. We were still freer then to do stuff. You could kind of go out in the street and be gorilla and take photos. We, we didn't have permits. We wouldn't have even known, you know, how to get a permit. You know, we were like half stoned, you know, running around with cameras that we bought in the market, making videos. I'm not interested in the, in developing and noodling around in a dark room. Ironically, when we bought this house, it had a fully equipped dark room upstairs in the attic, but I've never used it because in all that time, I never really felt compelled to go back and get wet and sticky and make nasty smells around the house with, uh, with all of the chemicals involved. I actually am not into darkroom printing. Um, I think I can do better digital prints than I can darkroom prints. And the paper's much nicer. It doesn't curl up like, for example, darkroom paper, you know, wet, wet uh, process of paper does. So what I have always done is um, basically I just process the film. I use um, like a little um, a changing bag. It's called a black bag. And I, I load the film into the developing tank in that. And then the rest of it you can do in daylight. I find taking the film out of a developing tank, the moment you've fixed it and you can take a little quick look at it, and it's very, very satisfying if a negative's kind of like, you know you can do a good job with that negative, or basically you've fucked up and the negative looks like shit and you know you're never gonna get a good print out of it because that's the reality, is actually you cannot get a good print out of a bad negative, you just can't. I love developing film and it's a very kind of zen, sort of chilled thing, you know, I put a bit of music on and swish the chemicals about and, uh, and, and pray that I haven't made a mistake. For some of them I would just like take it home and develop it in my my mom's bathroom and sometimes fuck it up and learn as I went along. And some of them, you know, the Polaroid ones, I would just develop, like, develop in the street on this little cranking, you know, machine that we used that Joe loved. At the end, it's not about megapixels and it's not about, you know, the uh, necessarily even the superb quality of certain lenses. It, it's what you're pointing it at and how you capture the emotion. And those are the elements really that make a good photograph. I think that um, possibly if there is a secret to all these photographs, apart from the nerdy details, uh, technical details, it's actually that the band knew me. It was kind of like, you can just relax. You're one of the, you know, you're like a kind of mate. 
And that just works so much better than if you just walk into a room and meet people for the first time and it's like, oh, you know, you're, you're the photographer and they're kind of like posing. For my money, the better you get to know people, the more relaxed they are, the less they notice you. And that makes a huge, huge difference, actually. I always say like, no one really cares about this stuff as much as we do, you know? Um, we were obsessive about our musical projects, we were obsessive about the words in the songs, the way the pictures looked, what, what we were wearing, um, what we were doing, who we were hanging out with, what we were reading, um, what we had to say. Those are things worth sharing and reminding people of. <laughs>